LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider for genuine medicine. Our main branch is located at Rubis Toll Station, Sabaki, Athiriva on Mombasa Road. Our top value is convenient healthcare and dispensing quality prescriptions at the best value proposition. Our main attention spans around providing quality medicine and excellent services to our customers. We're giving 10% discounts on all supplements, hypertension and diabetic drugs. We also believe you shouldn't pay too much to stay healthy and that's why we'll match any advertised price on prescriptions and medicines. LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider with a human touch. Welcome everyone to Let's Talk on Ibru TV. I am so excited personally because it is Furahi Day and I have so much planned for the weekend. But right about now we're going to talk about compliments and insults. Do you know the difference? There's a difference between compliments and insults, but some people don't know the difference when they come, when they start complimenting you. And it has a name. It is called Backhanded Compliment. So you're going to learn more about that later on in the, sh on the show. But up now you got to save the number on the screen. It's our WhatsApp number. Start texting us. Follow us on our social media platforms at Ibru TV Kenya everywhere except Facebook at Ibru TV KE. Welcome to the show. My name is Lily Asigo. Yes, it is on the No Friday. Basically, we're letting you know everything that you've done. Like your busy life is over there. You're taking care of your husband or your wife. If you're thinking about your care of your children, you have so many struggles and issues in your life, but there's certain things that you need to make sure you know. And we have you. We got your back when it comes to that whole situation. So make sure you go ahead and come a little bit closer to the screen. Make sure you put on your ears. Pay attention to what we're going to be talking about. And let me tell you, when it comes to the gossip that's happening around here, it is insane, insane over here. And we're basically talking about families and how we need to appreciate the people and it's, uh, the things that they're going through in the situation right now rather than trying to come back afterwards when their situation is already gone when they're already uh, unfortunately they might be passed away and then now you're trying to come back later on basically appreciating the people in your lives while they're here with you right now make sure you interact with us on our social media Lily has already said the number I mean or has already said the uh, whatsapp and uh, the social, social media. media but you can still go ahead and interact with us it's your girl ayuma kaguli ayuma kaguli everywhere just make sure you go ahead and follow oh well karibuni sana we we've had a very interesting conversation behind the scenes and yeah. i think i'm just pumped up and you know what i won't tell you what it is but just know one of these fine days we'll actually have a conversation about it well today we are learning new things i am in shock when we we, we were given this topic by a very able producer i was surprised that it's something like backhanded compliments mm. have you made a backhanded compliment to your friends or to people that you know and did you do it unconsciously or did you know? Well, stay tuned for the next one hour. We're going to give you the best, best and amazing, amazing hour of your life. We finish up the week, the week on a very high note and then we'll have a discussion and see what we have in store for you. My name is Nashipaya Enesamo. You can call me Nash Karibuni. I love the fact that we normally learn new things every single time on this show. We learn from each other. We yeah. also learn from our producers and just by doing research and everything else. So we always hope that you, the viewers at home, that you make sure you learn something every single Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Let tell me us. tell you, the hot talk is on a whole nother level. We have the industry film, um, I guess we'll call him like a really big expert over there in South Africa. He goes by the name of Sal uh, Silas Miami, who is refusing to talk to his very ill and sick mom. We also have Mungai Mbaya, who is the brother of Tyler Mbaya, and his girlfriend, Aisha, who are talking about the hypocrites in their lives who have decided not to talk about the whole situation that's going on with their death of their child and the drama that's surrounding all of that. And then we also have Jalango and uh, Kamenid weighing in their opinions on Amber Ray 
and the drama that's going on as her as the second wife, eh? president of the second wives club over there. And his, uh, Jalango's exact um, statement when it comes to that, he was like, I see polygamy is better than prostitution. Yo, let's get all into that. It's time for Hot Talk. Now we have renowned journalist, the son of the renowned journalist, Luis Otieno. Uh, he goes by the name of Silas, Silas Miami, who is talking about the situation where he has with his sick mom and the fact that his mom is now sick, but apparently she was a really toxic mom in his life and the situation that he has been brought upon him. He said, that he, I told my abusive mother, I was told my abusive mother is unwell. But this information was relayed to me by a third party because she is too proud to reach out herself. Even at death's door, she refuses to swallow it and apologize. And that's why narcissism looks like. That's what narcissism looks like. Sending thoughts and prayers. And basically he went on to say, if you are a survivor of a narcissistic abuse and you're following the wild things happening over there, I need you to know that I see you. Your pain is valid. I believe you, and you're going to be just fine. You deserve better, and you owe nothing to those who harmed you and those who are loved by you. And I think this whole situation really, like, is um, we can all resonate with this whole situation and everything where you have somebody who wasn't exactly the best person they could be towards you. In this case, this is his mother, but it can be any uh, family member or friend or anything. And just because they're going through a tough and difficult time, it doesn't mean that all the things that they wronged you just automatically re erases. Um, my boyfriend always likes to say, I see bad people become old people too. So just because, just because I see someone is old doesn't mean that now all the bad things that they've done to you in their past automatically erases because now they're old and now they're needy and now they need your help and everything. And if they're not able to come to you and apologize for the things that have done uh, against you, you should still hold them to a certain standard. But honestly, when it comes to Silas and the whole situation where he, which he has with his mom, I think Forgiveness is not only for the other person, but it's more for you as well. You know, uh, when you're sitting over there still holding on to all the pain, holding on to all the wounds, holding on to all the things that they've done to you, it's hurting you more than it's hurting themselves. And there's that guilt, that guilt that you get when you know that you weren't able to smooth things over and you weren't able to make peace once somebody has passed away. And I kind of really feel bad for Silas right now because he's dealing with a toxic mother. And we don't know what situation it was between the two of them, what made the um, relationship between the, the two of them really, really toxic. Mm -hmm. But if it was me, me putting myself in their shoes, yeah, I would, I would try to make the relationship between my, me and my mom really, really good. Because you don't want to be holding on and saying, oh my gosh, I wish that I would have just um, forgiven my mom for what she did. I wish that I would have been able to have come to a resolution between the relationship that we had. And now you feel like there's that bad karma. Mm -hmm. You feel as if like, you know, you were able to, you could have been able to be the person to bring resolution between the relationship, but now it hasn't happened. I really feel bad for Silas, but I think that right now, while his mom is in hospital, right now while she's really sickly, and the, there seems to be a situation where like her life might not be able to be continued to its full um, you know glory and everything he should really just come and forgive her in terms of like the things that she's wronged him because life is too short for you to still be holding on to grudges and everything and you should be able to forgive the people who have wronged you and still learn from the lessons that they've taught you so you're not put in a situation where you're still being um, wronged by other people so honestly I hope that he's able to come to a resolution with his mom and he's able to come to some type of peace in that whole situation because at the end of the day even if you're being uh, you've been given a bad mother that's still your mom yeah. you know what I mean that's yeah. still the person that's still taking care of you mm -hmm. that's still the person who has brought you into this world whether or not they were able to do it in a better ability that's something that's up to discussion but you can still forgive them but learn from the lessons which they brought onto you yeah well I need to say that no one has the right to be abusive to anyone else so whether it's your mom, your sister, your neighbor, your cousin, your, your colleague, 
you don't have the right to be abusive to anyone. And we are so sorry that you had to go through that. Your childhood was, wasn't as our childhood. But what I need to say, what I need to make you understand about parents is that we are all raised differently. So your parents were also raised differently. Probably your mom did not have, get the, the right education and probably maybe she might have given birth to you at a young age. So mtoto akaza mtoto. So she, she learned everything with you, through you. So like when you become older, just forgive them. Especially when you now become older and get to experience uh, being a parent, you kind of understand. You just, you're like, uh, my mom was very angry at me because my dad was probably abusing her. Mm -hmm. She didn't have enough money to raise us. She didn't have enough, uh, she didn't raise enough school fees to pay for us. So sometimes you need to like put yourself in your, in your parents' shoes and try and figure out why did my mom behave the way she behaved. And then when you get older, you're able to sit down with your parent and tell them, because that is what we did. Mm. My mom was very harsh. But it, we got to a point, we sat her down and we were like, hey, mom, now we look at our total. Nini, look at Shida, nini, nini, nini. Then she just started explaining, like, guys, you are seven. Seven of you shouting <laughs> here and doing nini. Today, this one is sick. Tomorrow, it's the yeah, third one, yeah. like, like that, like that. Yeah. So you're constantly parenting. You don't even have a life for yourself. So sit down with your parent. Get to understand why did, did they act the way they did. And then you get to forgive them also because you're going to become a parent and the same thing might happen to you. Just put yourself in your mom's shoes and just imagine you have a son and uh, all of a sudden your son doesn't want anything to do with you. Because yeah. like for this case, um, in this case, the son is saying that the mom can't even call him directly and explain mm. her situation. She has to use a third party. That is so sad. And for her to use a third party, that's a way of apologizing. Do you know apologizing can be in form of words mm. and also actions. A human kikukosea leo, if I'm too proud to say sorry, do you know what I'll do? I'll start acting as if I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, so the mom is trying to reach out. So kindly, the mom is sick. And those people who don't have parents, I am lucky enough that my, both my parents are still alive, mm -hmm. but we have people who do not have both parents. If you talk to them, they will tell you, by the way, whether your mom, your dad was a bad parent, just love them. Because the day they exit from this yeah. world is the day that you'll discover, by the way, <laughs> as much as I wasn't talking to my mom or my dad, they were a very important aspect, a very important factor in my life. So let's, let's not just like encourage this. Yes, abusing people, insulting people, being toxic, negative, is something that we need to discourage every single day, but there are ways that you can deal with them other than ignoring someone. Because if you ignore someone, you're not teaching them anything. They'll continue. If they are na narcissistic, you have to talk to them, make them understand, get help. That's all I need to say. I, I think, and just to add on what you said before I say what I wanted to, when, when you say that when someone wrongs you, they don't want to face you directly, it's not always necessarily because they're proud, maybe mm -hmm. because they, they don't know how you're going to handle it, yes. or they don't know your response and mm -hmm. they're afraid. And in this case, it's a parent versus a child. And you know what? These are very sensitive matters, to be honest, because we know of, of children who are, have anxiety or they're dealing with depression or go, just going through life in a very difficult way because of of how they were raised but you know what if you are an african child let me tell you you have 10 to 20 reasons every day of your childhood that you can come <laughs> up with and and you know just you you decide to say your parents are toxic and all that first of all our parents especially our mothers when we were growing up and i'm talking about parents who are in their 60s or, or 50s or 70s and all that yeah they didn't have an avenue to 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 remove or to get to rid vent, of or huh? to vent, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. They didn't have that avenue. They didn't have chamas to go to like what we have right now. They didn't go for drinks like what we do probably for us at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. we do, they didn't have road trips. You know yeah. what? These these ladies or these women were stuck being wives and mothers. And and some and of them... And suffering on their yes, own. Yes, and suffering yeah. on their own. It was hardship. It was suffering. And that's why right now you may get an in-law who will tell you, you know, I suffered. So, kapo vumilie, ndi vile mimi nilivumilia. You know, 
these things happen. Yeah. So at times, most of the time is even tell, people will tell you, me, my mom used to chapa me. Mm -hmm. I don't even understand why she was doing all that beating. Mm -hmm. But probably for her, it was just the anger and she didn't have anywhere else to, to get that anger, mm -hmm. anger from. Right now, as we post on social media and all that. Then again, my concern is why did he post on social media? Why did he post on Twitter? Mm -hmm. That also tells a lot about yeah. him. And you know what? I, I don't disagree that maybe he's sad or he's going through stuff or he had hardships growing up and all that. But you know what? Ayuma has put it so clear. I, I, could, I can't take anything out of it. When you forgive, it's for you more than even the way yeah. it is for the other person. Yeah. yeah, and talking about forgiveness, we have Mungai Mbaya, who's married to Aisha, and they happen to be relatives. Uh, Mungai happen to, happens to be Baha's uh, brother, Baha, we all know Baha from Machachari, yeah. and they dated for about two years. They got pregnant. They said it was unplanned pregnancy, and then after getting pregnant, they got a son, and um, unfortunately, the baby died at one month old. So that is not the issue. The issue is that Aisha is saying that when she was pregnant, no one went to visit her. And when she gave birth, also no one bothered. But when the baby passed on, that is when everyone wants to reach out and just get to find out how she's doing, how they're um, handling the problem. And this is what she said. When I was pregnant, no one came to see me. When I had my baby, no one came to see us. Now that he's gone, everyone wants to come over. I've been drained since he was born because he was in and out of hospital. But I, of course, I, would, I wouldn't keep saying that uh, on my Insta stories. No one checked up on me. A few, only a few uh, were true to their words. This was a time everything, this was a time everything in our lives was tested, especially true friendship. I'll forever love, appreciate everyone who was truly there and everyone who helped us, everyone who was there for my son. Well, I need to say this, that we, we are sorry for your loss. May God console you the best way he knows how. But then again, when you have friends, they also have their own lives. So not, they won't call you every single day to find out how you're doing, and that's life. It has happened to every single one of us. So sometimes when you go through life, yes, lose some friends, get new friends, like move on with your life, you know. This is a time you get to know your real true friends. And we say when someone cares about you, they will find time for you. Yeah. So those fake friends and nani, what's your name now, Wendy Uko? Now focus, focus on your marriage, focus on your man, focus on your future and your career. These other things were chana nazo because once you start posting this, you know your friends are also uh, going through uh, your messages and they'll be like, oh, ni mimi anambia, oh, ni anambia, and then it will just be messy. In this day and age, I feel like just live your life and just leave everyone else because everyone seems to be fake these days but we are sorry for your loss yeah i like i can really sympathize with aisha's situation just like putting myself in her shoes yeah and unfortunately when you look at the culture of everybody like when it comes to um the highs and lows in your life most likely when you're doing well when you're being successful when you post that picture of wow i just bought a brand new house oh i have a brand new car oh i'm now married oh i just got my son a lot of people won't say that congratulations. It's like it hurts them deep inside just to say, oh my gosh, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. But now when they feel as if you're low, like you're down, like the way them also are down and like low in their lives, that's when they're quickly to come, they're really quick to come and say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Ukwaje, what happened? Da, 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 da. I can understand why she would feel so bad because when she was at the heights, the peak of her happiness, no one is coming to say, I'm so I'm happy for you. Congratulations. But now that things are bad, now that she's actually lost her first child, you can imagine as a first time mom, the jitters that you have, this how you're so afraid about how are you gonna be a good mom? Are you gonna be able to take care of your child? You just scared in general mm -hmm. and then now you've gotten that child and you've lost that child the same people who couldn't tell you congratulations are now ha here to tell you i'm sorry 
I think it's good that she was able to put those people on blast, but I hope that it's not only a social media thing. It's not only a thing of where you're just talking to people on social media and saying how bad they are, but now in your own personal life, you can cut them out of your life. Now you just know X, Y, and Z, you're no longer in my life. X, Y, and Z, you're not a, um, a close person to me because when I was at the height of um, happiness, you weren't able to come and tell me congratulations, but you're just there very happy and ready and waiting for me when I'm upset. So I understand where she's coming from. First of all, I, I actually don't, don't even want to think about the pain of losing a child. Mm -hmm. I am truly, truly and deeply sorry about it. And as Lily has said, may God heal you the way he knows possible. And you'll find his healing. But then again, this girl is grieving. And during grieving, people tend to, to say stuff and do things and push away people. It's, it has stages and all that, right? Mm -hmm. So right now we can cut her some slack and all that. So she can say whatever she wants. But at the end of the day, imagine now if people were not there for her during this hard time. Mm -hmm. Now looking at it from the point of, you know what, you've, you've lost your child. We don't understand the pain that you're going through. And that's why everyone is trying so hard to, people don't, sometimes people don't even know what to tell you when you're going through hardships, you know? And, and the best way they can do is probably tell you, send their condolences and all that. And they are doing this, and maybe because also the story of uh, when, when you got a baby, it wasn't out there as this when you, lost, when you lost a baby, because sometimes sad news travel faster and mm -hmm. people are trying so hard to be there for you. I think they are not being hypocritical. They're just being there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you look at it that way. Yes, because now imagine if they were not there and she had lost the baby. But what, how come they're there to be there for the sorry times, but for the happy times they're not there? But but I how do we know? Delicious. You need them more right now. Yeah, you need more when you're grieving you need than more. when you are happy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So you anyway, need more. moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on swiftly. Well, so now these um, Amare and um, and and uh, he's Jamal. called who Jamal story is still going on, and well, people have opinions. And Jalango and Kamene earlier on, uh, this is what they said. This is quite interesting. Polygamy is better than prostitution. <laughs> well, so population among women is very high. So if you're looking forward to being married, just know, just know, <laughs> Ayuma, just <laughs> know, <laughs> you might go in as number two, uh -huh. or your man might bring you a number two if you're number one. First of all, guys, um, I can't compare, I can't po compare polygamy and prostitution. That is like day and night. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, who, uh, who decided people are doing prostitution and all that? I wouldn't get into that so much. But I think this, this notion of, of women, women are, are many than men. Not every woman out here wants to get married. Let's mm -hmm. start from there. And not everyone is cut out for marriage. You know, so you know what, and if polygamy is, is a thing, it, I believe and I still keep, and I'll, I think I'll keep saying this, and especially coming from a Maasai, Maasai culture and all that, it's normal for us. But can it be done in the right way? And you, if, when you come in as the second second wife, don't ever think you're going to replace the first wife. So come in knowing that you're the second wife, know your position, and you know what, do not complain. Be there and be comfortable. And you as the first wife, okay, let your second wife just accept all I need to say is that I won't take this uh, route here because I just expect a second wife. Mm -hmm. Expect. Mm -hmm. I'll go on. I'll go on and say ex you can get married to someone who is gonna be faithful to you, who will not bring a second or a third wife. It is very possible. Mm -hmm. So don't like sit down here and start like believing everything that you read. Uh -uh. Do your own research. Even our parents sometimes they tell us, married me, but are too. But are you not thinking? Mm. Don't you have a mind? Mm. You know, just use logic and just date someone and have this conversation with them. If they wanna bring in a second one, one to while you're still dating, one by the way, Mr. Kiyom Chezo, Miss him two or three co wives. Why do you hate and having a co wife, Lily? Sorry? Hmm. Why do you hate having a call? <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate anything. Yeah. I am a free spirit. But yeah. we all have uh, boundaries. We all have uh, different. different. Yeah, yeah, we are all different. So someone else will be like, okay, Miss Inashida, for example, if you're Muslim and you know that your religion allows a second and yeah. a third wife. Yeah. So definitely when you get married, just know there's that possibility of your husband getting a second or a third wife. Mm -hmm. But if you're a Christian, the Bible is so clear. You come and you become one. There's nowhere where I read like two or three uh, wives or husbands. Yeah. But you know, again, 
when he said give Caesar what belongs to Caesar, it just means zile um zile nini zimekuwa on earth. They just follow the rules which are here on earth. So if your religion in Akubali, mm. that's fine. If you're in Akata, follow to Pia. But you can get someone who doesn't need more than one wife and they're there. They're out there. You know, when you look at this whole situation between Jamal and his first and second wife, I, the only thing that I find really negative about the situation yep. is the second wife thinking that she's better than the first but, yeah. wife. Mm -hmm. There's no the rule book. Exactly. There's no yeah. rule that says when you are the first wife, you're down here. Mm -hmm. Second wife is up here. Third wife is up here. Mm -hmm. Fourth wife is the mm -hmm. highest and everything. But when you come into a situation, these two are already together before you were there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, she has already accepted the fact that you're going to come into mm -hmm. the situation. Situation. Be respectful to the first wife. Mm -hmm. like, wh what's so hard about that? Yeah. Just being respectful. You don't even have to be friends. You don't have to be cordial. Just be respectful. Uh, how you want yourself to be treated, treat her in the same way. Yeah. I don't like the fact that like um, uh, Amber Ray has come into the situation and now she's saying, Ati, uh, you, you're old. You, you're... Mm -hmm. Breasts Those are, are tough, sagging, yeah. Yeah. you, you're this and that and everything, and me, I'm the now new young trophy wife. Until now, she's no longer president of uh, wife number two, there's a wife number three over there. That's mm -hmm. the now the, 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 the young, fun person to be there in the situation and everything. I just don't like the fact that like you come into a situation and now you think that you're better than the original situation. And I think that's where Jamal has crossed the line completely, and he should be the one that, that's trying to keep the peace amongst his wife wives so that mm -hmm. now they're not fighting amongst each other yeah, yeah so and it depends, I had somewhere it on the man yes yeah. and I had somewhere that the first wife and the third wife are normally tight like this well I don't wife. know why you tell us on 077 <laughs> but now we're gonna take a short break and when we come back we're gonna talk about backhanded compliments so go ahead and google about that LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider for genuine medicine our main branch is located at Rubis Toll Station, Sabaki, Athi River on Mombasa Road. Our top value is convenient healthcare and dispensing quality prescriptions at the best value proposition. Our main attention spans around providing quality medicine and excellent services to our customers. We're giving 10% discounts on all supplements, hypertension and diabetic drugs. We also believe you shouldn't pay too much to stay healthy and that's why we'll match any advertised price on prescriptions and medicines. LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider with a human touch. Welcome back. You're still watching Let's Talk. I'm loving the kind of feedback that you are sending us today. Keep on texting us because we're going to keep on reading them throughout the show. Judy Piri, thank you so much for always watching the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Love you girls. Looking lovely. Uh, hello, beautiful ladies. Balozi wa K-Town, we love you too. Enjoying the show from Kiamba. I think when all this pandemic thing is over, I should be the first fan to come there. Yes. I agree. Mm -hmm. Producer Miss Kia. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Are you mom, what else? We have Hilda from Thindugwa saying, you all look amazing. I'm loving the show. We also have Nesselia and saying hi to Nashipai. She's mm -hmm. Hi, Hi, you. Hi, Just <laughs> you. <laughs> <It's> you. <laughs> and we also have someone else saying, see, hi, girls. I'm lovely as usual. Mama Zuri here from Nairobi. I want to chime in on the first story regarding toxic people. I want to disagree with Ayuma. Um, I lived with a toxic toxic mom who did all manner of things including physical and emotional abuse. I forgave her and trust me I didn't need her forgiveness. I have healed and I'm okay with my life. As for her I could care less what happens to her. Okay, thank you so much, you guys, for like letting us know your situations and your stories when it comes to these topics. You know, we're just coming from a point of view of what has happened to us, mm -hmm. so it's great to have your input as well. But right now, it's, as we look at Ask the Girls, and we're here seeing all your messages, we have someone over here who goes by the name of Lim saying, I like your show. I have a question. My baby, whom Nimeishi Nayeye for nine years, Natukunawatoi Wawili, confessed that she had has been having an affair Namse Anaishi near our estate. 
Now, my question is, was I wrong to be angry with her? Um, I was, was I wrong to be angry with her? Because the first day after the confession, she left me with two children and four years afterwards. Now, uh, guys, I'm still begging her to come back because I love her so much. What I read from this situation is your mother of your children, two children, has left you gone into another relationship, I'm guessing, continued on her life, left you with her two children, and now you are begging her to come back. Honestly, sir, I'm telling you, continue with your life. There's something, I always say that there's something really deep when a woman is willing to leave her own two children to go on to a new relationship. And I don't know whether it's brand new love that's making you leave your children or anything, or it's a um, really toxic relationship with the father of your children. But the fact that a woman would leave her children to go into a whole new brand new life without her children, it shows how much she's not willing to go back to the original situation. I don't think you should be holding your breath hoping that she'll come back. I think it's time for you to move on. I think it's time for you to find a new relationship. Hopefully you'll be able to find somebody that's willing to take you on and your two children. But honestly, you don't want somebody who didn't care so much. Four years has passed and they didn't care to even take Check on the children. Forget even you as a spouse. No, no, it's a two-year-old two and, and a four-year-old. Four oh, sorry, a two-year-old yeah, yeah, and a four-year-old. Yeah. But honestly, like, it's, it, a women, we have given birth to that child, and now you have two, and I have left you with the children. It just shows me, like, if I was in that situation, I would go, but I would also go with my children. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd want to be with somebody who is willing to just neglect her children, and you're still sitting over here, time is passing, and you're still begging her to come back. How well do you know that she won't, be, she won't do that situation again, where now you guys come back, you have another child, and then she decides to leave you again with the next child? Uh -uh. This guy should tell us exactly what happened. Because I feel like he's playing victim. Mm. You live with someone for... You, for for nine years, and then you just leave. You, are, you wake up one day and you go. Uh, uh, tell us what you did. What did you do to your wife to make her leave her children, her two-year-old child? Imagine. And it four. is not possible. Maybe there's something that you did together with your relatives that she was like, eh, watatu ni wache watoto because niki wachukua tana ima mbomingi vita vita nini, I am tired. This woman was very tired. Na alikuwa mesema, mini kipata tu mtu wana nipenda, because these are the same men who tell us, oh, na tutuwa wili utenda wapi, utapata nani, ukituambe hivyo, tunakuwa chia watoto, and we duck. Guys, first of all, uh, I'm so done with this whole thing that women have to travel baggaged. Like, a woman can't travel light in case she's leaving a relationship. You know what? These are also your children. So if the woman has decided to leave, and you know what scares me? It's when a woman cheats. Now leave alone cheating, because... For a woman, a woman just don't just wake up and cheat. She has planned it. She has yeah. seen this is what is good for her. And that's so scary because most of the time she cannot turn back. Mm -hmm. And she's completely done emotionally. She's done there with you and she's gone. Because of the fact that she has left the children, it's different. But then again, can we normalize even women not being attached to their kids? There are women who don't have that maternal in them. We, I know of families where a man is more attached to the kids than the woman. Totally. Hmm. Yeah, it's normal. There are people who are, like, it doesn't, just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you have to be attached to your children. It's only that society has made it look like just because you give birth to this child, you have to have that maternal with them. Mimi, I know of very close people in, mm. in my life who mm -hmm. the women are not attached to their kids. They don't, even taking care of their children is because they don't, just, they don't just have an option. But most of the time, Unapata, it's them there who does everything. But then again, this is a very serious situation. And I think, I, I, I agree with what, I agree with Lily. There's something that really happened for this woman to decide to turn her back yeah. to their husband or boyfriend or baby daddy mm -hmm. and the children. Mm -hmm. So he needs to check himself and really figure out what happened. Yes, yeah. but now it's time for us to tell you the difference between insult and compliment. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and interesting. <laughs> and what exactly backhanded compliment means. So it is time for On the Know. So an insult is an expression or statement, sometimes behavior, which is disrespectful. It may be intentional or accidental. Mm -hmm. Now, a compliment is a polite expression of praise or admiration 
to politely, like you politely congratulate or praise someone. Now we come to the backhanded compliment. Backhanded compliment is a remark which seems to be an insult, but could also be used or understood as a compliment. Could also be understood as a compliment. So right now I want to give you two compliments, okay. Ayuma. And then you tell me which one is the compliment and which one is the backhanded <laughs> Compliment. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ayuma, you're so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Ayuma, <laughs> you're so beautiful for a dark-skinned chick. <gasps> so clearly, <laughs> <laughs> the I real compliment, that. the real compliment was like the one for you. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And I think so many um, dark-skinned people have gotten this compliment. Like, you're so beautiful for a dark-skinned chick. Yeah. You look so nice for despite your ailments of having all this melanin and everything. Yeah. And so clearly that one was like the backhanded yeah. comment. Uh, yeah, which, which is not good. We need to identify. And most of the time you find someone that gives you a backhanded compliment is someone who has real issues, like deep issues with themselves. They don't understand how you, they probably don't know your personality. If I know your personality, I won't go like, Ah, and by the way, today I love your shoes today as a Kutui giant comes a Jana. You understand? Exactly. If I know how you react yeah. to things, it will also stop me from saying these things. Mm. And also, what you do after you've been to given a, a backhanded compliment matters a lot. So, I want to give you scenarios over here, and we just kind of try and explain mm. and let the audience understand what we mean. Mm. So, number one, I really like how you don't care about what people think of you. That's a backhanded compliment. Right. Why? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's shown as if the thoughts of the other people mm -hmm. are strong mm -hmm. and are valid, yeah. but because I don't care, because you don't care, like I really like the fact that you're not able to care about them. Oh my gosh, your friends think that you are an untrustworthy person, mm -hmm. but wow, I love how you can just walk out here confidently <laughs> with your lying uh, <laughs> characteristics. You know, with so much confidence over there that oh you're so goodness. good. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, it's, it's a backhanded compliment. Uh, yeah, yeah, because why would you now start thinking about what guys are saying? It exactly. means like, hey, <laughs> but then before you continue, don't you think sometimes it's also like if I'm telling you something, could it be your attitude will determine on how you take you take either the compliment back towards yes. me? If if you have low self esteem, definitely. Yeah. If I have the a low self esteem, yeah. yeah. If yeah. I have low self esteem yeah. and you're the one giving me a backhanded compliment, mm -hmm. no, 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 just a normal compliment, I will definitely take it badly. But your hair looks nice. Hey, you just see Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Lily, oh my gosh, your legs are so smooth. And you're thinking, it's only because I have waxed <laughs> my <laughs> legs that now she's here telling me how nice my legs are. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so yeah. right now, let me focus with you, Ayuma. Yeah. Kidogo too. I've had people in my life, in your presence, who have told me that I look mature. Mm. or I act mature for my age. And most times I tell them, oh, thank you. But looking back, I'm like, it means that, that you, really you're, a you're a young person that's acting old. Oh. <laughs> Like, like honestly, can you live your age? exactly. <laughs> when you think about it nicely, yeah. you're being told. Let's say, for example, your age is 25, yeah, mm -hmm. and now you're acting like a 40 year old person. Someone is there telling you mm -hmm. that you should be young, but you're acting. Like an old person. But how that's about really how about they just tell me, yeah. Lily, you're so mature. Yes. I like don't that. Don't add the for your don't age ask, part of don't it. Don't add anything. And, else. and most of the time, it's because this person is feeling intimidated, or they're wondering, oh my god, when I was that age, I was so dumb. Like, I, what was they even doing with my life? Mm -hmm. So they want to take it out on you and mm -hmm. wonder, how old are you again? <laughs> and you're too mature for your age. <laughs> Okay. I've had people tell me yeah. that you don't even look uh, uh, like you've had three children. You don't look like a mother of three. How do mothers look like? No, <laughs> that's a compliment. That's a compliment. A fana, that's a uh -uh. compliment. No, it is not. I, it doesn't boost Just your tell nini. Me, uh -uh. No. Uh -uh. 
you uh, uh, Nessa, please, don't, don't uh, whisper in my ear. That's a compliment. <laughs> it is not a compliment. It is a compliment. No. Kwani, how mothers want to carry you. No, let's free. just be all the way the honest. The truth is. In, in the African uh, <laughs> culture over there, they, until my ear <laughs> came <laughs> off. That's how you know it's real. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. you'll be looking at people. They are mothers of even just one child. Yeah? And they have the characteristics. Their bodies are showing as if their child has just been born today, but honestly, their child is 15 years old right now. My yeah. argument you know. is, my yeah. argument yeah. is that there's a difference between uh, being a mother and kuka mama. That's why it's a compliment. Okay. Uh -uh. Mm. When you use the word mother, mm. don't add anything else on top of it. Just tell me, wow, you're a good mother. You look like, oh, so you're taking care of So here's the thing. Mm. It's not necessarily Ayuma about how your body, how you've added some, some cages and all that. But then I think it's how you carry yourself. Just because, just because I'm a mother, uh, it's not a must that I go to the shop with milk dripping. <laughs> but because now I am, oh, now I that's am what breastfeeding. They mean. Yeah, now that's what they mean. Like you've, you've really taken good care of yourself. <laughs> I, for me, honestly, I, I, people tell me that you don't look like you have a child. I'm thinking, yeah, but mm -hmm. I take it as a compliment. I think there's that <laughs> no, expectation. Like a, a mother. I think there's, <sighs> a, there's, a, there's an expectation that like if you're young, you need to keep yourself looking young. Yeah. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. So if you've already had children, then that means as a normal young person mm. that like you have up kept your yeah. original physique and everything. So mm. I think it's a compliment. It is. Another one. Mm -hmm. You're pretty when you smile. You should do it more. That's, that that's a, a backhanded compliment, especially uh -huh. to women. Especially to women, because like you know, uh, in, in general, our, our our job is seen as to just be happy, mm -hmm. be happy with your husband, be happy with your children, regardless of all the stress and drama that they're bringing on to you. Your job is just to sit there and make sure that you cater to them with a smile. <laughs> then you crash behind the smile. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They should allow us to be like uh, you know what? Show your emotions. Show your emotions. If you're happy, smile. If you're not, I you know you're stuck on traffic, and then you want me to smile. How? What is there to smile about? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a back it's a it's a back uh, Yeah, it means that when you're you're not smiling, you're yeah. not pretty. Yeah. You should exactly. be pretty whether you're smiling yeah. or not smiling. to give a mask because of COVID. smile. There's a way you can smile with your eyes. <laughs> Another one. I don't know if you've been told this, but you're actually beautiful. At your actual. Mm. That's the backhanded compliment. It is. Yeah. It's like, I see, now once I put my magnifying glass onto you <laughs> yeah. and really sit there and, yeah. like, you know, look at your features yeah. and everything, I realize, oh, wow, you're actually beautiful. But mm -hmm. before, when I just saw you firsthand, you were ugly, uh, yeah. according to me. Yeah. So it means that you, in other words, you're, you're ugly. ugly. Mm -hmm. no, well, I, it, it depends on who you are. I think it depends on who. You're actually beautiful. You know, yeah. It Not depends, just you're beautiful, but actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It depends on who is saying it. I think for me, honestly, it depends on who is saying it. If I really like that person, let's say, for example, it's a guy who has said that, mm -hmm. and probably he's seen now features that he's, he's never seen, or probably I'm always wearing deras, you know, <laughs> things which are covering up, and then this day I, I talk here with like a hot, uh, something tight kind of mm -hmm. dress, and then they tell you that. I, I think it depends on, on the situation mm -hmm. or who is saying it. And also our viewers are guilty because sometimes they text us and tell us, hey, Nashi Pai, today your makeup looks good. Today. So it means, like today. <laughs> so it today. means the other days her makeup was like work or Just be work. nice. <laughs> <laughs> so just be nice. The way you normally tell us, Kina yeah. uh, they normally tell us every day that, oh, ladies, you look beautiful, you look wow, and we thank you for that. Another one, hmm. It's cool how you're not insecure about your... Then they mentioned Why are you calling out yeah. my insecurity? <laughs> yeah. That's not your job. But first of all, like for me personally, mine is, I have a small foot. I'm like mm -hmm. a six foot long human being. And then my foot is quite small. Mm -hmm. And you see that like, people get you like, oh my God, it's so nice that you actually have a, sho a, 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 a foot that you can easily get shoes. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, wow, okay. Uh, first of all, you know, it, it's, it's already an insecurity. And the fact that probably I've already told you that it's an insecurity, and then you're telling me that, no, that's not nice. How yeah. about just telling yeah. me that I'm confident? 
Exactly. Instead of saying, ah, how is that I like your how business? you're not insecure about your forehead. How is that your business? <laughs> but you know, when you when you look at a situation where someone is so quick to point out your insecurity yeah. or something negative about you, mm. it's because that's what they feel about themselves, you yeah. know? They're projecting. So exactly. So like, how can this girl yeah. be so happy <sighs> with her big forehead when me with my big forehead, and I feel so print, upset. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I feel so um, um, unconfident about that situation. Mm -hmm. And they're actually jealous of the fact that you're able to go through your life confident and happy with your insecurity that them it's like it's holding them back so how do you think we should handle such people when someone comes in and gives you a backhanded compliment what do you think you should do because for me i think first of all you should just ignore them come out taki mambo mingi by the way just ignore them and just move on because sometimes when you engage with people when a person is crazy do you want to stoop low to their level or do you want to just go your way? For me, I won't stoop low to that level sometimes and just ignore them completely. Now imagine it's your neighbor, the one who is going to go parking lot. I think for me, um, I'm a very outspoken person. And my face, first of all, I have that resting face. <laughs> so maybe I'll tell you. If I don't feel comfortable about something, mm -hmm. I'll definitely tell you. I'll tell you, oh, okay, but actually I did not process it the way you processed it. Mm -hmm. I'll make it look like, you know what, my so I don't think you're telling me the right thing. I'll mm -hmm. just tell you. And you, I would put as a fan. <laughs> you know, like, I feel as if, like, there's an angel and a demon just sitting over here, you yeah. know. So when, like, I hear something negative, the angel in my mind is saying, just forgive them. <laughs> Pray for them. <laughs> Pray for God's love to shine upon yeah. them, like Kina Lily over yes. here. And then the demon is over Who? there saying, tell them about that third roll on their belly. Tell them about uh, yeah. that acne uh, on their face. Uh, Tell them about it. And unfortunately, because I am a human, my head leans more towards the demon. You know? Side, you know? And I'm there stuck talking to the demon. And like, honestly, if you say something negative about me, I'm like, oh, wow, okay, yeah. So you said uh, you're so beautiful to, uh, for, for a dark-skinned dark woman. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, thank you so much. And I love your confidence with all the acne on your face. Ooh. No, no, no. I can't help it. <laughs> I have to give you the same type of violence you've brought unto me, which is not a good thing. Yeah. I know God is looking at me and saying, oh, you must be better. But, <laughs> but as a human who's trying to work to being a better person, <laughs> I'm still working on that level of being petty. Yeah, but I think we need to lose enough a bit, child. <laughs> <laughs> <Are> you, <ma? laughs> it is that time for game time. I know right now you're looking over here in shock at our uh, comments and everything. Make sure you send us a message on our WhatsApp number, 0770-729-366. But right about now, it's game time. <laughs> to put on my earring, which has refused to stay, but you know what? It's okay. The game we're going to be playing is called Spin or dunk okay spin where basically down. we have to spin around and make ourselves very very dizzy mm -hmm. and try to see mm -hmm. if our basketball skills are <laughs> up to par and if we can go ahead and throw the fruits in the basket into the container uh our producer doesn't love us so let's go ahead and see if we can play this game <laughs> i am worried i'm a long human being if i fall my head will be in kajiado and then in the kajiado. legs yes my head will be in kajiado <laughs> then the legs will be in moranga i love how you're using the word long <laughs> All right, so we have these containers over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring them forward. So it's one by one, right? Yes. So oh, I sorry. think two reds, everyone will take two reds, two greens. Okay. I don't wanna run around looking for them. Who is Lily, that? you're starting, what do you mean? Where Shots. are you running away okay. from? Unless are you putting music or I'm just rotating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How many times? Three. One, two, two three. three. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> immediately, immediately. Okay. Oh, man. You only get three chances. Four. Guy, your last chance, your last chance, no. Oh. Oh. Hiya. yeah. Guy. <laughs> Well, oh, one, I'm Nash, I'm you ready, you ready? In my defense, I am a woman. No, you know, women are not supposed I to. One, two, one, two three. three. I'm drunk. <laughs> I was so close. Okay. Okay. This is your third chance. Please. Yes! Yay! <laughs> 
No, you're supposed to be here. Umemusonga mbele. No, you are here. See your life. Ah, almost, well, almost, almost, right. almost, almost. Okay. I'll be here handing you. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you'll have two green. Oh, uh -huh. are you good girl? girl? I'm okay. Mm -hmm. No, she's fine. Okay, last chance. Yes. But we don't have a winner. Can we try again because we tied? Okay, we are the yes. ones who no, have tied? Uh, the ones who have tied. The tied. ones who you have guys tied. Have tied. Yeah, you guys were here. You but wait. you are there also. Wait. No. 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 Let's get no. Yeah, no. You, we were not that close. <laughs> wait. Are you my move? Move. <laughs> we were not that close. Yeah. Okay. Lily, as the loser, <laughs> you can be the one to check if we've been able to do it the right way. Ah. Anyway, ladies, you know what? It is for Rahi Day and I need to rush somewhere. And you know what that means. Uh, you've already lost. Come down. <laughs> okay, let's make this thing easy. Yes. Good. <laughs> as she's busy putting them. <laughs> Yay. As you're really putting them, remember to follow us on our social media platforms everywhere at Ibru TV Kenya, except Facebook at Ibru TV KE. It's been real. It's been such an amazing week for us, and I hope you have enjoyed the show. Let's meet next week on Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. My name is Lily Asigo at Lily Asigo on Instagram and Facebook. You know what? I don't know how this show has gone by so quickly, but the great, amazing thing, you can still catch us on our YouTube channel at Ibu TV Kenya. But for now, it's your girl, Ayuma Kaguli. Ayuma Kaguli on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And like how I say every single Friday, go out and make memories for Monday. Well, you know what? I'm here to declare myself the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us for that amazing hour. That time you mm. like that was so yeah. fast. But thank you so much. We see you next week. My name is Nashipai Enesamo. Follow me on my social media as Nash Enesamo. And please watch us on YouTube. Share and like, thank you. comment. Yes, and like subscribe. comment. <laughs> <laughs> I need to win this. Bye. <laughs> LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider for genuine medicine. Our main branch is located at Rubis Toll Station, Sabaki, Athi River on Mombasa Road. Our top value is convenient healthcare and dispensing quality prescriptions at the best value proposition. Our main attention spans around providing quality medicine and excellent services to our customers. We're giving 10% discounts on all supplements, hypertension and diabetic drugs. We also believe you shouldn't pay too much to stay healthy and that's why we'll match any advertised price on prescriptions and medicines. LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider with a human touch.